Welcome to Machines and More. So this is without a doubt the most massive heat sink that one could possibly cram into the NR200. I was cautiously optimistic about it fitting and today we're gonna take a look at a true semi-passive setup featuring this brand new passive cooler from Noctua, the NHP1. So what I'll do is give an overview of the cooler itself, how you might set it up, and then I'll give some performance benchmarks and finally discuss the pros and cons and why you'd even want this rather unique heatsink and a semi-passive type of setup. Big thanks to Noctua for providing their review sample and the new NFA 12x25 LS version fan. And as with all reviews, the testing and the review methodology is all independent. So first off, this is a beautiful heatsink with big open gaps between the heat fins and the intent of the design is for the cooler to be operated as a passive or fanless setup, or alternately you can set it up as a semi-passive configuration with the case fans helping the cooler out, like I've done here. The large gaps between the heat fins allow for natural convection to dissipate the heat, so that's heat rising just on its own, and also allow case air to flow through easily when case fans can be set up to aid its performance. As you might imagine, tight heat fin spacing, such as with a typical heat sink, would make it a very unattractive airflow path, especially when you're not using a cooler fan. So this is specifically designed for that purpose. When viewed as it's set up here in the NR200, the heatsink measures about 152 millimeters wide, 154 millimeters tall, and it protrudes 158 millimeters uh, off the surface of the CPU heat spreader. So it is quite cube-like in overall form, and even though it almost covers the entire footprint of a mini ITX motherboard, it fits just fine on the test board here, which is the Gigabyte B550 ITX with Crucial's Ballistics RAM. And the critical thing here is the cabling on the right side of the motherboard adjacent to the PSU. It really needs to be flat so as to allow the cooler to seat properly. Because of the 158 millimeter clearance requirement, this cooler will not allow the case panel to completely close, but I was able to secure it with some screws. And as with all unsupported setups, your mileage may vary dependent on your motherboard, your particular CPU, your case, and your particular cooler. So, but it does work well enough. I'd consider it okay with the screws in this case. Now this thing is one premium hunk of aluminum and nickel plated copper weighing in at almost 1200 grams. And for reference, the heat sink on the U12A is typically around 760 grams. Now this extra weight is a consideration if you do travel with your system. This is definitely one of those coolers that I would unmount prior to shipping or taking it on a plane. 1.2 kilograms is a lot of weight hanging off of motherboard, so you really don't want to stress out that the, the motherboard here. The heatsink does feature um, extra clips to mount an optional cooler fan, but in the NR200, this case fan fits almost perfectly, ideally over the top of the cooler, so the cooler clips really aren't necessary here. Now, even though it's positioned very close to the cooler, this fan is doing double duty in that it's aiding both case airflow and airflow through the cooler. So the way I'd recommend setting it up in the NR200 at least is semi-passively. In the right setup, you could use it in an open air case, or if you have a CPU only setup, you might be able to run this heatsink without any fans. Though if you have that GPU in close proximity, it's really gonna be difficult to run it well. The cooler does come with hardware featuring Torx head screws with a driver included. Very different from the Phillips heads that Noctua usually uses. And it also comes with NTH2 thermal paste, which is a little bit higher grade than their NTH1 usually bundled with their consumer or CPU coolers. Insulation is pretty simple. Once the harbor is mounted, the two Torx screws are just tightened down progressively until the cooler is tight against the CPU surface. And I've set up this test build here with four of the new NFA 12 by 25 LS or low speed fans. This fan is recommended to be added as a cooler fan by Noctua if needed, but they can absolutely be used as case fans too. There are a number of A12 by 25 versions out there, but this is different than the ULN version, even though they both top out at 1200 RPM because these take a PWM signal. And from my testing, it could still run at 9%. Uh, at 100 or so RPM before 8% shut off the fans completely. And that means if you want your system to idle at zero, these fans are great for that purpose. 
if that's what you want, while also providing the mid-range RPM performance that the A12 by 25s are renowned for. But if you don't need the zero RPM mode or low RPM ranges, and I certainly don't recommend it, the regular A12 by 25 is more flexible with a bigger RPM range. And other than that, and their response to the PWM setting, these are identical. So this is one well-built, stunning looking cooler, right? But is it competent? Well, according to Noctua's own publicly available performance rating from their site, the NHP one when run passively is rated at a 42 on their Noctua standardized performance rating system, where the next two coolers up are the two L9 versions rated at about 60. The L9s typically match the performance of a stock cooler, just with a better noise profile. So that gives you an idea of where this is expected to land when passive without a fan. With a fan attached though, the NHP one increases to a rating of 89, which is between the top down low profile L12S at 88 and the 92 millimeter tower in the U9S, which is rated at 93. So with our setup here, we can expect performance along those lines, depending on the case fan speeds that we run. Because of the thermal expectations here, a reasonable CPU to run is something like a Ryzen 5, so I use the 5600X for testing. To get a rock bottom baseline, I just pop the top and shut off the fans and running this entire system passively, the cooler does seem to be able to run at stock PBO settings okay, though the temps were still rising towards the end of this test. But as Noctua advises, you do have to have a reasonable expectation for thermals or performance. And here the CPU is definitely having the clock down to about 40, 50 megahertz on all cores to stay at around 75 degrees, where one can typically expect 4.45 gigahertz on all cores with good or decent cooling options. It's really not ideal though, and I don't know why you'd set it up this way in this case, since even with these case fans, they're very nearly inaudible, even at 1000 RPM, and with all four, it usually adds about like 0.5 decibels. Yet they make this cooler completely serviceable at the higher end all core turbo clocks. And just to give some control, I split these two fans on the CPU side as one channel and these two fans on the PSU side as another channel. And that way I could play around with the RPMs a little bit to see what works well and treat the case as essentially two halves, especially with this flow through cooler on the GPU. When the cooler side of the fan is set at 1000 RPM, the temps top out at a manageable 75 degrees for the all core blender render when the chip is locked to 4.5 gigahertz and 1.25 volts. So that approximates what you'd see in an all core boost scenario. And maxing out all fans results in a marginally more audible system, but with thermals improved another degree or so. Now, even though it's an incongruent comparison from a noise standpoint, since it doesn't have any cooler fans doing single duty, I did throw in a benchmark with this case and the U12A's two fans at 1500 RPM, which is a much louder setup, but consistent with Noctua's rating of 169 for the U12A, it does outclass the semi-passive setup by quite a bit. When used for gaming, temps are manageable. The fan speeds directly over the cooler have a much more prominent impact on the CPU thermals and the GPU thermals really benefit a lot too with the higher fan speeds. Now, with the exception of whatever GPU you're using, these fans are incredibly quiet. So let's just take a quick listen to what the case sounds like at zero RPM and those tested RPMs. So while it's really difficult to compare apples to apples because of the noise differences, when set up as a semi-passive cooler, I'd say the performance that I've seen thus far does put it just a tad under the U9S. However, the U9S does need a cooler fan that's running at about 12 to 1300 RPM to get to equal performance levels. And this setup is for sure quieter with the very pleasant noise profile of these case fans. So why would you wanna run this? Well, first off, it's a remarkably quiet and unique setup, especially if you are noise sensitive. 
these NF812 case fans here happen to be able to work with the cooler almost perfectly in this setup, creating the vertical airflow that is focused and directed. If you need, you can even have them idle at zero RPM. And although you can try this type of setup with your typical heatsink, in this case, it won't work as well, but the NHP one is tailor made to be run this way. You can adjust fan curves to respond to the CPU temps, but even at load and max speed, it's a very quiet. And the better case fan speeds absolutely help out the GPU temps significantly. You can do a de-shrouded GPU mod with this type of setup too, and that would give you a super noise optimized system. Or you can run something like an X Proto type of open air setup with this, and it would be a very impressive looking passive setup. And at least in this case, there's also less dust accumulation issues than if you set up a tower cooler as a rear intake. Now, build performance is something to behold with this cooler. So if you appreciate the feeling and appearance of a precisely manufactured product, you'll also be very happy with this. However, if raw performance is what you're after, I would really caution you on getting one of these set up since at best, the temps land around that of the best 92 millimeter towers. And there are a whole host of better CPU coolers that can still run quietly enough in this case, the U12A being one of them. At a list price of 110 US for both the U12A and the NHP1, I would go for the U12A if absolute performance headroom is desired. The U12A can run a Ryzen 9 or Intel i9, whereas you're really limited to Ryzen 5 levels with the NHP1. If you've got a low TDP CPU and a case setup that can jive well with this cooler, the low noise that you can accomplish with the NHP1 setup is something that other cooler setups cannot match though. It's big, it's bulky, but generally speaking, there isn't as much of a physical limitation to your other components as you might think. I mean, even with this mini ITX board, the PCIe slot isn't obstructed thanks to Noctua's thoughtful design. This is quite possibly a heatsink that is unique enough to design an entire case around. And even though I'm not advocating it due to the performance consideration and just how beautiful this thing is in its original form, you could absolutely reduce the height clearance above the motherboard just by grinding off some of the heat fin material here. Since unlike with a tower cooler with protruding heat pipe tips, you won't hit a heat pipe for about four and a half centimeters. So if there was a smaller SFF case that you really wanted to work and integrate this cooler into like an end case or a Sliger S610, there's a lot of potential there. If liquid cooling enthusiasts have their custom loops, air cooling enthusiasts now have this at the opposite end of the spectrum. It's a minimal, simplistic, and elegant approach to CPU cooling. And although it does require some thoughtful compromises, when it all comes together, it's such an enjoyable symphony of silence. I hope you found the info helpful today. If so, give a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Please consider using some of the product links down below to support the channel. Thanks for watching today.